What's your opinion? I mean, I got a booty hole, and I don't share that. First place. First place. Greer's in first place. Greer is in first place. Everything about this, the mix, the sounds you use, the instruments, everything about it is very, very unique. I would love to hear what your music sounds like. Please do a breakdown for us so next week we can watch it on stream, or I'll watch it as soon as you finish it on stream. Let me know. First, I started with this DX7 plugin from Arteria. Literally the default preset, one of the classic sounds. With that, I just played these chords. that into Waves Factory cassette and I was using the Insight Let's Go preset which makes it sound super wide and warbly. After that I ran it into some reverb. I have this little device here that throws the entire thing off of the grid. I could use Ableton's built-in track delay feature but I found that kind of messes with your input latency when you're playing other instruments. Especially in a time-conscious battle like this, everything you hear I played on the keyboard, except for the drums. So it's important that I'm able to do that kind of stuff quickly. Next, I ran that through the new and improved Ableton Redux device. I lowered the sample rate and took off some of the high end, and it gives it a bit more of that grittiness. It sounds like it's running through one of those like 12-bit samplers from the 80s. After that, I put the kick in place. And you don't typically do this, but I actually layered two kick sounds on top of each other. One of them sounds like this. Kind of a weird, like, boomy sound, and then the other has a lot more low end and click to it. And when you combine the two, when you EQ out the lows of one, when you combine the two, it sounds like this. I ran that through another Redux. Bass mono on the utility, because this jitter knob introduces some artifacts in the stereo field, and so it just ensures that nothing weird happens there. There's also this grace kick. Chopped it up and reversed it. Next, I put some shakers in. And I actually ran these through a waves doubler because I wanted them to sound wide. There's also this other shaker right here. Next, I added this one clap sample that I like to use in everything. Add some reverb. And I also have this other weird chain going on. I usually don't do this, but I wanted some more low end to the clap. By itself, it sounds like this. But when you add it all together, without, with. I have this little fill snare right here. I also have this little drum fill right here, running through a little micro shift to make it super wide. There's also this 80s sounding ride cymbal that kind of comes in in the second part. The bass is a Synclavier patch. It's another plugin from Arteria. Uh, it was like one of the first bass patches in the list of bass presets. And without any processing, it sounds like this. I ran it through some multiband compression and made it mono. Ran it through devil lock. And then to add some of that low end back, I ran it through the kick tight preset. It's a corpus preset. And what you can do is turn on the sidechain feature so it listens to what note you're playing. And you can adjust the dry wet knob to taste. EQ it a bit. There's also this really cool Moog sound that comes in. Literally another Arteria plugin. It's the default preset. And by itself, it sounds like this. I wanted this to supplement the main bass sound, so I didn't want a lot of low end in it, and I wanted it to sound a bit wide so it'd stand out a bit more. So I ran it through this filter delay stereo flex preset. There's also the CZ brass preset, literally another Arteria plugin default preset. EQ'd out the mids a little bit, boosted the highs just a tiny bit to taste. More towards the beginning of the song, there's this really cool clavinet sound that comes in. 
We ran that through Valhalla delay. Nobody ever tells you about this plugin. I didn't know I had it for forever. It's a Waves plugin. It's called Metaflanger. And I'm not going to explain how this works. I'm just going to let you listen to it. I was watching a tutorial on how to make a Tame Impala type song and they kept bringing that plugin in. Add some multiband compression and EQ. At the end of the song we have this really cool keyscape patch. Just some upright piano that I played. I have the character set to retro so it sounds a bit brighter because Naturally, this is a really boomy sounding upright I found. You can turn the color shift knob all the way to the left and it makes it sound a little darker. You can see how it kind of comes in with the brass. It was at this point that I realized I didn't even use the sample. <laughs> Uh, so I had to incorporate it somehow, kind of at the last minute. I had like 30 minutes left in the battle, and it's not really obvious at first how the sample is in this song. Most people in their entries, they just left it untouched, so it was very obviously a piano, or they just changed the pitch of it. For reference, this is what the sample was. It was Playboy Cardi's son just banging on a piano. But I took this one note and froze it and put it in a sampler. I set the sampler device to loop mode. Sounds like something straight out of some 80 sampler again, the style I'm going for. EQ out the low end. Run it through Ableton pedal, gives it a bit of grit. Put some reverb on it. Put some instant flanger on it. Put some ping pong delay on it and EQ at the low end again. And then when I played it on the keyboard, it sounds like this. And that's it, that's the whole beat. Some last things. I'm running everything into this free plugin called G Clip. It's a pretty nice plugin if you don't have the T Rex Clipper. You're able to adjust the clip amount with a percentage value, so you can clip the heck out of it. Also, right here, there's another meta flanger that turns on for a little bit. Approximately 10 hours later. Now, there's a few things that I want you to notice about this. Number one is I don't have any long, elaborate intro. I found that the best way to get more votes is to hook your listeners right as they click the play button because there's like 500 people who have only 30 minutes to browse, 500 submissions, and so they're clicking through really quickly. And so the moment they click on your play button, you want them to get hooked. So I start the beat just immediately at the start. Another thing too is you'll notice the style of beat that I'm in. If I was making a beat for a rapper, it probably wouldn't sound like this. This is more of just a for fun thing showing off, which I think is the main purpose of the beat battles. The beat doesn't need to be artist friendly as Kenny says here. This is definitely more artist friendly, but that doesn't matter in a beat battle. And I think that's one of the most important things that a lot of people should realize is Kenny's community likes a certain style of beat. And so for me, that meant using a lot of Arteria plugins, using some older sounding drum samples from like the early 2000s, but I would use those anyways. Also, I think another important thing when doing a beat battle is time management. You should know where your samples are. Like I'm using Ableton Collections to categorize all my favorite samples and all my favorite samples for beats. I think a really good folder of samples, I found this a really long time ago on Reddit. It's just this famous drum kits pack. There's a bunch of kits in here full of songs from like the early 2000s, late 90s. There's probably a couple drum machine samples in there. 
Also, you want as much time as possible when you're doing these. So literally the moment I decide that I want to do a beat battle for the day, I have Ableton open, I have File Explorer open, so I can download the sample and drop it into Ableton immediately. Also, another thing that really helps is if you're able to improvise pretty quickly on the keyboard. Like for me, I have perfect pitch and I can play by ear. It lets me figure ideas out pretty quickly. But yeah, I hope this video helped you. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. I'll post a link to my SoundCloud as well in the description if you want to check out my other stuff. I think I might also stream on Twitch. I'll put the link for that in the description as well. But yeah, Kenny, thank you. You're awesome. Like really awesome for doing this. I think it's really cool that you're doing this with your community. This sort of stuff didn't even exist a couple years ago and I never thought that anything like this would happen to me. Keep up the good work. Yeah, hope you like the video. See ya. Greer up next, let's go. This is really hard to me. Greer, I feel like you're super fire. Love this. I'm saying first place, y'all. I think it's hard to argue. I don't know, Greer first? This is definitely more artist friendly, but that doesn't matter in a beat battle. Man.